How you doing, Rachel? It's good to see you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Worship with St. John's via Zoom. Uh, my name is Ridgely Joyner. I think I know most all of you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is our midweek Advent series that we'll be doing throughout Advent for <clears throat> each week in December. The final week of December before um, Christmas, we'll be doing what's called a longest night service, and that will be held on the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. Uh, so that will be on Tuesday, but for the next uh, couple Wednesdays, we'll be exploring the themes that we are reading in, uh, and what we're using with worship on the YouTube channel that many of you have been able to watch or even come in person. We started these services because we wanted to have a, a bit more of an engaging experience for you all. For all I'll take it down and so um, throughout uh, these midweek uh, worships, worship experiences. We will not have a sermon. Uh, we're going to be exploring uh, Visio Divina, uh, which is looking at art that is painted or created based on interpretation of scripture. So there will be some time in the proclamation of the word for us to have a discussion and see and talk to one another if you so choose. If this is not something you want to take part in, you can just listen. Um, there's a time after the sermon for some reflection. Uh, so before you, before we begin tonight, uh, if you could all each uh, mute yourself, I've 
been doing some research with Zoom and uh, those who are doing Zoom worship on a regular basis are saying that it gets very jarring when we're all trying to talk at once if we're doing something in unison. So even though we'll be muted, know that we're all saying it together in unison. Um, and also if you have your Bible, go ahead and um, have that with you so that you can reference the scripture if you would like to, it'll be up on the screen. Uh, additionally, uh, if you have an advent wreath or a candle, we're going to have a period of time in the service where we're lighting and lighting uh, the advent wreath. If you don't have the wreath at home or if you don't have any candles, we are handing out candles at the church uh, this season. So you can go pick them up on the carriage house yeah. porch. Uh, last but not least, I'm hoping that we could use this as a time for all of us to be leading each other in worship. And so I was wondering if anyone would be willing to read our scripture reading and the prayer of illumination. It'll be up on the screen. So all you'll need to do is unmute yourself and read it. I'll volunteer to do it. This is Judy. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Judy. Cynthia Schumacher had her hand up. She'd probably do. Great. Sorry, there's there are 21 people here, which is very exciting. I can't see all of you at once because so, I'm sharing my screen. Cynthia, would you be willing to do the prayer of illumination? Yes. Happy to. Wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start with our call to worship. And if you have any questions at any point in time, um, feel free to chat Nancy or Rico. She's sort of the person on the ground that's <laughs> helping with the logistics with Zoom. So let us worship God. The power of dreams lies in waking up. For when we close our eyes, we can see a better world. When we close our eyes, we can dream a better dream. But when we open our eyes, we begin the work of faith. The power of worship is the same. When we enter this space, we can see a better world. When we enter this space, we can dream a better dream. But when we leave this space, we begin the work of faith. So come in, dream your dream, find hope here. For in this mere half hour, we will begin the work of faith. Let it be so. At this time, if you have your Advent wreath or a candle that you would like to light, we will be doing the uh, lighting of the Advent wreath. And Libby Dalrymple is going to be helping me with this. I dream of sunflower fields. I dream of key lime pie with a mile high meringue. I dream of the days when we could be a part of a crowd. I dream of snow days. I dream of a world that will let kids be kids. I dream of full tables instead of empty bellies. I dream of schools with enough money to teach. I dream of parents with enough money to feed. I dream to keep awake because if we don't dream of better days, then we might forget that this is not what God had imagined for all. So today we light the candle of hope. For hope is the very thing that keeps dreams afloat. May this light be an invitation to keep awake. May this light be our invitation to be Advent people, people who dream. Amen. Amen. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, and mourns and mourns. Thank you. 
Because it is so hard for us to wait, it is not easy to live through Advent's days. But watch what God does during this time. God waits for us to turn from our old ways to find the right paths. God waits for us to admit what we have done and failed to do so we might be forgiven and graced with new life. Let us approach the one who waits for us. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Original dreamer, over and over again in scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream for community and hope. We hear your dreams and yet we do not open our eyes. We continue to live with the curtains drawn, the covers pulled tight, eyes shut to the realities of the world. Forgive us, kindle a hope in us that will burn through the darkest nights. Give us the strength and the will to keep awake in this sleeping world. 
with hope we pray. Amen. Even now, God approaches us. Mercy transcending anger, hope overcoming despair, life triumphing over death. This is good news, my friends. This is the news of great joy for each of us. Enriched in every grace, blessed with joy and hope, transformed by love, we will live as people of Advent. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh, great dreamer, you dreamed up the stars in the sky. You dreamed up that magic baby smell and the way cream sinks into coffee. You dreamed up the crunch of fall leaves and jazz music. You dreamed up wisteria and evergreen and the pure magic that is a six foot tall sunflower. And in the midst of all of that, you dreamed up a dream for your people, a dream of hope and justice, a dream for eyes wide open to both the world's suffering and the world's beauty. So today, as we read scripture, we ask that you would plant that same dream in us, pour out your spirit on our hearts and minds so that we may see what you see and dream what you dream. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. 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 Mark 13, verses 24 through 57. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you this, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the son, but only the father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts, on his, puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you all, keep awake. Thank you, Cynthia and Judy. So uh, this series is about dreams and those who dream, <laughs> as you can imagine, we've been talking about dreams a lot. And uh, this is a series uh, with a, a ministry called Sanctified Art. Some of you have had experience with their worship services. Uh, they've crafted a lot of the liturgy and they've also created uh, pieces of art. These are ordained pastors that do um, exegesis on scripture, and then they interpret it and express it through art. And so today we are going to be looking at a piece that uh, one of them made, and we're going to do something called Visio Divina. If you have never done this before, it's similar to Lectio Div Divina, and that's a 
translated as sacred reading of the text, where we read scripture and we allow the spirit to, to speak to us. And so we will be taking some deep breaths and I will be asking you some questions for you to ponder. And then after we've had our own time with the piece, then I will read the artist statement. And then we will have some group discussion around the scripture, what we saw, what stuck out to us in the scripture. And then if there were any parallels to the piece of art that you saw as well. So first I invite you to center yourself by taking a deep breath and relaxing your body as best as you can. Allow your shoulders to lower away from your ears. Let your arms rest on your lap and let your feet be fully supported by the floor. Feel the weight of your body held by the chair. Spend this time in quiet. Open yourself up to God's voice. Continue breathing deeply as you read the image before you. This is called Spark of Divinity by Hannah Garrity. In this moment, simply notice the visual qualities of what you see. The colors or lack thereof, the lines, the shapes, the form and space, even the texture. Now take a deeper look. What parts of the image are your eyes most drawn to? What parts of the image did you quickly brush by or overlook but now see? And now use your imagination. What are the figures you see in the image? What story do you assign to each of them? Does this image invoke anything you read in the scripture reading? What strikes you the most? Next, I will read the artist statement. This paper lace design explores the poetic patterns in our Mark text. Stars fall to the lower part of the frame as a fig tree leafs out in the central circle. The fig tree creates a circular motif reminding us of the tree of life while also representing the sun and the moon in this text. With a celestial flow, lines circulate around the edges of this piece, replicating the pupil of an eye. It struck me in the scripture reading, what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. She says, in the time of COVID and in this season of Advent, our eyes are open to so much. We can see that systemic change is not just possible, but immediate. God has tried this before. Can the human collective bring about God's dream for a new heaven and new earth? She says, I can reach out and touch it. It is possible. In one of Oprah Winfrey's master classes, the late John Lewis shared how he was shaped by his mentor. Jim Lawson taught us the whole concept of the beloved community, 
this idea that in the bosom of every human being created, that there is a spark of divinity. And it is the spark of something that is sacred and holy and special and that we don't have a right to destroy. The stars in this image depict that divine spark we are born with, that hope. Those stars that have fallen from heaven and lodged themselves within each of us. Let us not be found asleep in this moment. Let us live into our spark. Let us seek it in each person we meet. So that was her interpretation of her art and scripture. Let us go to God in prayer. God, into the cycle of our lives, when all seems well with us and with the world and when our yoke is easy and the burden is light, you break in. You scatter our complacency. Into the cycle of our lives when we are comfortable and at our ease, when the fire is lit but our eyes are closed, you break in, you wake us up. You break into our daily prayers, our humble hearts. You break in when our defenses are down with an angel's shout or the quietest sound, you break in and we change. All things change. Keep us awake, oh God. Keep us awake. For our benediction today, uh, it'll be our benediction every time we come together for worship. And it's a poem about carrying a dream. It says, to carry a dream is to walk at night or to walk by light, but with a pebble in your shoe carry a dream is to wake at night, to wake and blink twice in case you see something new. 
to carry a dream is to plant trees in old age, to be a part of a church that is human and frayed. To carry a dream is foolish and wild. It is the faith of a child wishing on stars. But to carry a dream is also hopeful and wise. The faith of our elders saying, God will provide. So may we walk until we see the light. May the pebble in our shoe remind us why we fight. May they say we are foolish and unwise, and may we continue to dream and may hope keep us alive. Friends, I invite you to go from this place seeking the divine spark in everyone you meet, keeping a watch, waking up to God's great work in the world, keeping awake for God is coming like a thief in the night. Amen. Amen. Amen.